Hi, Dave Yunkles, Last Cavalry TV. Welcome to our new series, Creating a World War I Trench in 1 16th scale, or 120 millimeter. Our first episode is really going to consist of talking about the composition of the diorama, uh, some reference ideas, and some of my personal reference materials from my collection. And then we're going to finish off with showing you how to paint and create some of the untold amount of accessories that are going in to this diorama. So let's get started. Creating a realistic diorama requires some research. This diorama, again being a World War I diorama, is my personal main interest in uh, all types of modeling. So I wanted to show you some pieces from my original collection that we're duplicating in miniature. This is the later model German World War I gas mask can, which contained the gas mask. And here is the can painted in miniature using Vallejo field gray, burnt umber washes, and camel black brown chipping. This is a 1916 pattern, World War I German helmet. want you to notice all the scuffing and scraping that we're going to show you how to replicate in miniature. And here is the 1916 pattern helmet painted in miniature. Next, we have the model 98 bayonet with its original brown leather bayonet frog. 1915, they were supposed to go to uh, black per orders, but this one is actually from 1916 and retains the original brown leather. World War I German canteen in canvas. I should mention that these kits are from John Smith Model Bow and they are absolutely fantastic. But here is a close-up of the M98 bayonet painted in miniature and also the canteen. German enlisted man's belt. This is Prussian. Notice the tone. It's not a straight black. It is a very dark brown like a camo black brown from Vallejo or the chipping color from uh, AK. Both would be a very good choice to replicate that. And then finally, World War I German potato masher. You can see it has five, second, five and a half second fuse markings on this. And a few of the grenades we'll be using in this diorama. Notice that the head or the charge are painted in different shades of field gray before weathering. And we'll be replicating literally dozens of these in the trench diorama. This is World War I German LaBelle flare gun. As you can see, we have the flare gun tucked into his belt, painted with humble metal coal and polish. I've assembled quite a bit of reference material for this particular diorama, which is going to be taking place uh, 1917, near the end of the Battle of Verdun. Here's the basic composition of this diorama. So far, it contains three figures, and then there will be duck boards, all sorts of walls of the trench built out of basswood and, you know, backyard bits. There's going to be uh, many rifles, grenade cases, etc. But the first figure is from Jeff Shu. It's his first World War I figure. I think he did a very, very good job. But I did change out the gas mask can, the helmet, and the canteen because I thought the John Smith parts were a little bit better, and of course I want them all to match. This figure is from John Smith. He makes absolutely fantastic World War I figures, and he gets every single detail right, <clears throat> which, as you know, is always difficult to do. Up front, our NCO appears to be waiting for somebody. Painting helmets. Now, this will apply to any time period, but we're going to beat it up a little bit. So, I base-coated the helmet with a Vallejo green-gray, which is an absolutely perfect World War I German helmet color. And I'm going to now, since that is dried, apply a very thin wash of Vallejo Burnt Umber, my all-time favorite color. So this step, you can just cover it. It's just going to tone it down a bit and dirty it up before we go in and apply our scratches, chips, etc. So you just let this dry. I use a hair dryer on my bench, uh, it just speeds things up a little bit. Now that the burnt umber wash is dried, it just kind of dirtied it up a bit, and we'll be applying more washes. 
I've mixed some of the base color green gray with a little bit of Vallejo Iraq sand just to lighten the color and we're going to apply our first chips and this is done really in the same fashion that modelers you know primarily armor modelers sci-fi modelers are weathering their vehicles so we start with a lighter tone and using the edge of the brush create a bit of random chipping now I won't do all of it but I just want to give you an idea and again once this dries just slightly lighter in tone then I'm using AK chipping color and Vallejo makes a camel black brown which is also very good and above the lighter tones that we applied again we're going to begin to add the small chips you can see I'm using a good brush this is a da Vinci number one and add those and it'll be a little stark looking right now but remember we're adding more washes filters what have you to tone this down a little bit but the helmets did get very very banged up so that. Now I'm taking a small piece of sponge, just the old packing foam, and we blot that on a piece of paper. There it is. And where that really gets a lot of wear and tear, the helmet, we use this sponge technique. Then we're going to let this dry for a moment and then we'll apply a few more washes. I'll show you the finished product really simple as you can see but very effective and now that the chipping color has dried I'm going back over it again with burnt umber just to tone all those colors or bring all those colors together and again tone the helmet and while that is still wet. I'm adding just a little bit of a rust color, just a red brown, right to the top of the helmet. And I'm just letting that puddle in there with a little extra bit of water. I'll be adding some mud effects to this helmet, but we're going to be saving that for another video. Now, let me show you how to do some work by creating realistic wood grain. Okay, this is a real simple trick on replicating wood grain, and it'll work on anything. I just happen to be doing this for this World War I diorama. But we base coated the uh, 98 carbine with a Iraqi sand, but you could again use darker yellows or even a really light brown color. And then we're using Vallejo smoke. We thin this smoke out like crazy, and we're just going to wash it over this. And with repeated layers, this will dry to a satin finish and also replicate wood grain. Now, of course you can do this in oils, but for guys who like to paint in acrylics, me being one of them, this is a really good quick technique. We'll let that dry and we'll just keep applying more layers. So the first layer is dried, we apply a second coat. And this might require you know, 15, 20 coats, but it builds up the color gradually and with a real sense of depth. So again, when it's finished, you'll get this amazing wood grain texture. So I've added a few more coats and just again with repeated applications of this smoke color, you'll get this really wonderful satin wood grain finish. Here's one that I've already completed. There'll be plenty more tips coming up soon and we'll begin the trench. Hope you've enjoyed this first episode of the new series. Stay tuned for part two which will be coming up shortly. Thank you.